Hi, welcome to an introduction to folding at home. This is Paul and I'm going to be walking you through an introduction to installing folding at home on Linux. So let's go ahead and get started with Linux Mint 19.2. So this is a older version of Linux Mint here, 19.2. 19.3 is out right now and this is also a virtual machine. So if you're doing this, you will be need to do this. Uh, you will need to do this on a physical system hopefully with a pretty hefty graphical processing unit or graphics processing unit GPU in your system. You don't want to use a virtual machine for this, probably. I say that, but you know, maybe there are cases where you might want to use a virtual machine. If you want to join our team, you can certainly, you're welcome to join our team once we get to that section with Folding at Home. And um, let me move this over right there. And you could join our team. We'll get to the uh, the numbers there. 243116 is our ID, but we'll get to those numbers once we get the install going. So here we are inside of Linux Mint. Let's go ahead and I'm going to open Firefox and I'm going to walk through every step that would be required for installing Folding at Home on Linux Mint. So first thing I'm going to do is pop into Google and I'm just going to type Folding at Home download. So as we see that start folding right there, you got Windows, alternate downloads. So I'm going to choose that start folding right there. It notices that I've got a, probably a Debian Mint system here, Ubuntu. So I'm going to grab, the only thing I have to get is this client. So that's all I really have to get. So if I click that, it's going to say, do you want to open this or save this? I can choose, yeah, go ahead and open that. I can do that. And I'm going to do that for the first app right here. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, make it happen. Go ahead and do that with the first app. And it's going to install the, uh, the folding at home client through the graphical interface here. So it's gonna be really, really easy. So just choose install package. It'll walk through, it'll install the package. There are no dependencies that I had to install for the client portion. Uh, just the package is all we had to do. All right, so be sure you authenticate and install. Now it's going through and see if it can resolve any dependencies that might be there. If you want to look at the details, you can look at the details right there and it'll give you a kind of a terminal inside of the GUI so that you can watch what's happening. Next thing you'll notice is since we are installing through the GUI, it's going to pop up with a little uh, a GUI here and it says uh, fully at home username, anonymous or whatever you want to put there. We can just say whatever we want. Linux Mint user, I'll just put that there. The team number, once again, the team number here is something you don't have to put. If you wanna put, if you wanna be on our team, that's great. If you wanna be on the team that I created, it's 243116, and you are welcome to come on over. It just gives us credit for the CPU cycles. If you want yourself to get the credit for the CPU cycles, or if you just don't care, leave it at zero, and that's just a great thing anyway. Over here, with system resources, you can choose low, medium, or high. So over there, light, medium, or full, actually. So you got low, medium, or high on that. And if you want to choose that full option, it will really be high utilization on your system. So if you want to go with medium, that's fine. If you're concerned about burning anything out, I don't think you have any concern with that. But if you are, then medium would be something that you might want to choose. And you want the FAH client, that's the folding at home client, to be automatically started. Yes, we do. So we're going to choose next. Now, as we go through this, there are a couple of options with the folding at home configuration that we'll probably want to go in and look at. But we're going to look at that a little bit later. Now that we've got this started, I'm going to go ahead and close this window. When I close this window, if I go over to the little menu button here, click on the menu button, and I'll go ahead and type FA, and you'll see that uh, FAH, and you'll see it doesn't come up. The client's not showing there. Oh, that's too bad. Well, in that case where the FHH client is not showing, I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal here. Inside the terminal, I'm going to do a PSAUXW grep, and I'm going to look for anything that's FAH. So I'm going to grep for that. And if you look at that, we've got the FAH client is running. So we've got that thing running there. And there are a couple of options there we may want to use, and that's going to be a capital FAH when you're going through and configuring this. So FAH client and capital FAH when you configure that. But we'll get back to that in just a second. So not get ahead of ourselves there. Now I mentioned that we'll install these other utilities a little differently. So if you click that, which I recommend choosing right click and save as, but if I just clicked it there, I'm gonna choose save file, choose okay. 
Then I'll right click the viewer and I'm gonna choose save link as. And that's gonna go right to my downloads right there. And I'm gonna choose save. Now I wanted to do this install just in case you're doing a command line install and you wanna do this remotely. Uh, you can do it remotely, you can roll it out. I've, I've rolled it out to just around 24 machines. So that's uh, not a problem. It's easy to roll out and you can do that through, if you have shared SSH keys, you can just roll that thing out to all your systems. Uh, let's go and look at this one for installing from the command line. I'm going to enlarge the font just a little bit if anybody has any problem seeing that. And I'm going to pop into my downloads directory and that's where I download the file. So if I look inside there, we see that I've got my FAH control and my FAH viewer. So I'll go ahead and do a dpackage-i and I'm gonna install the FAH viewer first. Well, I'm gonna to try to, and you're gonna see a little something happen here. It's gonna say, whoa, we've got some dependency problems. When you see this, the first thing that you can do is you can actually type apt-get install-f, and I'll go ahead and sudo all that. Now, I do have sudo aliased in these cases, so I don't need to type it. But just in case you do, there you go. That's what it looks like. So let's go ahead and choose that. Now when you choose that, it's gonna to try to fix the dependencies for us. So we're gonna press enter. You can see the Y is capital there, so it's the default value. So just press enter and continue on. It's gonna download the utilities, the, the dependencies, and it's gonna go in and go ahead and set up the FAH viewer for you. If you wanna go back and do the D package again, do DPKG, you can do it. That's not a problem. So you can go ahead and run through there and see the FAH viewer. Now, if we go over to menu, we're gonna see if it's gonna come up in, in 19.2. We do have FAH viewer that shows up in our menu. So when you pop that in, this will take a few moments to refresh. It'll find the project that's running and then it will show that you've got Linux Mint user, the team, and what it's trying to do right there. So once again, I am running in a virtual machine right now, so it's not the best of worlds, but I'm gonna leave it like that. Now we do have another utility in there and that's the control, and I'm gonna show you how to use control really fast. And so let's go ahead and do a dpkg, and you'll need to sudo that if you don't have an alias dpkg-i, and we're gonna do the fah control. Now when we do the, the fah control, it's also gonna say, nah, you got some dependency issues. If you remember, we've got that app get install dash f there, press enter, and it will run through. It's gonna say, do you want to install those? Just press enter, say yeah, go for it. It'll install the dependencies that we need. It's a, whoever wrote the software did an absolutely outstanding job. It's very clean, well-written. Uh, I would like it to install the dependencies by default, uh, but hey, if we were using another utility, it would. So this is just, really well-written software as far as uh, as integrating into Linux. I'm sure in Windows and Mac, it, it works just as well. All right, and once again, you can see it did the setting up, but if you feel like, oh, I really wanna be sure that I've got that installed, go ahead, you can type that right there. Now the FAH, if we type FAH and then tab a couple times, you'll see we have a few other options there. Now I'm going to menu and I'm gonna go ahead and type FAH and you'll see we got FAH control there. Now I am using the GUI there. I'm not doing that from the command line. You can do either way. And over here is where you might wanna configure your system. So you may wanna make a couple of changes here. You may want to add a GPU if it's missing. You, you can go through and look at your system info or the log, whatever's going on. And you can see if maybe something needs to be changed. For me, I had to install the GPU. So I had to actually activate the GPU inside of my FAH client. Now that is in the Etsy FAH client slash config.xml file, which I'm actually popping right into uh, into this link. So you uh, should see a link to that config file. If you want to use that config file, all it does is a medium utilization, uses your GPU and CPU, and that's it. That is the configuration right there. If you want to go through and change anything, you can change it here. When you change it here, we even go configure there and you can look at those to see what you've got. When you change it here, it is affecting, let me go over. Go to Etsy, FAH client, and you'll notice there's a config XML file there. Go ahead and cat that file, and it is changing this file right here. So 
that's it. So you see that the fold anonymous true, we got this uh, GPU V equals false. These are a couple of settings that I want to change. So I want to make that true. In this case, it's a virtual machine. So I can't really do much with the virtual machine. So on my computer, maybe on yours, you can actually go wild with a virtual machine. Maybe you have a dedicated video card for your virtual machine. I don't know. But that is all there is to it. Now, once you've got that set up and you've got folding at home installed, you can use any team number you want. You can create your own team. It's for the the it's actually for the greater good of the entire earth here. So if you go through and you make your own team, fantastic. I just made my own team and went with it. If you want to choose Team Zero, where it just uploads credits to wherever it might go, and that's, that would be CPU cycles or GPU cycles, fantastic. If you want to join our team, 243116, we welcome everybody to come onto our team. You know, as we uh, we go through and we want to see our score go up, it just gives you that good feeling that, oh, wow, look at that. We have some more credits or more WUs um, where you'll see that in the team credits. But if you want to look at that, go for it. If not, I hope that everyone stays well, and I look forward to talking to you another time.